So, welcome everyone to the Mission Books podcast, where we talk to authors about important books related to mission. So today we're talking with Cynthia O oh about her brand new book entitled From Banned Book to Bestseller. And the book tells the story of Bible printing in China. It's a fascinating story that our editorial team hadn't run across before we saw her manuscript, but we decided it was a story that needed to be told. And the book is just full of history, amazing stories, and it's absolutely chock-a-block full of photos. I think our designer said over 300. Like, there's photos on every page, full of photos from Billy Graham and John Stott down to just hundreds of smiling, beautiful smiling faces of people holding their precious Bibles. So it's a lovely story. Um, Cynthia, before we dig into who you are and why you're telling the story and how that all happened, I do just want to say to our listeners that this book tells part of a story. And I think it shows that God chooses to reveal himself in ways we're not always expecting or prepared for. Um, so in publishing this book, we're not downplaying in any way the struggles of those in unregistered churches and the value of the organizations that work with those churches. But we do feel it's an important part of just the story of God's vast work in this big country. So Cynthia, tell us a little bit about yourself and how this all happened. Right. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you for having me. I'm so delighted to do this. Um, well, I was born and bred in Singapore. Uh, my grandfather, um, he came from China in the 1930s to escape poverty. And then he and his siblings, uh, they came to know the Lord in Singapore when the gospel was shared with them. And uh, interestingly, uh, recently I found out that my grand aunt was uh, one of the founders of a Chinese Methodist church in Singapore. <laughs> So then, anyway, I grew up in church, um, started to be active in Christian ministry during my teenage years. And it was during those years that I began to read and study the Bible for myself more and more. And I became more excited um, about sharing the gospel and missions. So this led me to serve with crew um, after finishing university. And I later uh, moved on to be trained as a secondary school teacher, taught for a few years uh, before I joined United Bible Societies. All right, that's about my, yeah. Okay, and when did you join them? Yeah, I joined them in 2013. So that's about 10 over years ago. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, how did this, how did you get interested in this Bible printing stuff that's going on in China? What took you into that? Right, yes, yeah. So, um. Uh, in 2013, I was actually in the middle of my uh, part-time theological uh, studies. I was praying to the Lord for a job where I could serve him uh, through writing. I love to write. And then so a week or so later, uh, there was a staff from UBS uh, China Partnership. So China Partnership was formed uh, to support uh, and serve the churches in China on behalf of the fellowship. And its office is located in Singapore. So there was this staff who came um, to my seminary to do a day course. And then so we struck up a conversation. Uh, she was helping to recruit um, a communications manager for UBS um, China Partnership. And then she found me to be suitable. Then uh, I passed the interview and they recruited me. Um, yeah, I've been very honored and uh, privileged um, to serve with um, UBS CP uh, China Partnership yeah, for the last decade. Um, and now with this book, uh, I really am very um, grateful to the Lord for how he has answered uh, my prayers uh, beyond my imagination. Um, uh, UBS is actually a global fellowship. I was really amazed uh, when I could join some of these um, um, events um, to find out that uh, UBS is actually operating in about 240 countries and territories. And our mission is to make the word of God available to people um, all over the world. And so this often involves, um, but not, not limited to translation, um, publication, printing, and distribution of the Bibles, including um, in China as well. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. So did you start right. traveling into China and began to say, to see, hey, something's going on here? Exactly. Yes. Yes. 
Uh, when I was looking back on um, what led me to to writing this book, yeah, I I saw that actually um, two things really really intrigued me very much, yeah, uh, in the course of my service. So first was in twenty thirteen, my very first year, because uh, my director back then, uh, Kwa Kwa Singh, yeah, he wanted a new staff to visit the Amity Printing Press in Nanjing, um, as part of our orientation. So I went and visited. I was really impressed by how huge and well-equipped uh, this printing facility was. I had not known that uh, China was producing Bibles uh, for both local churches as well as for the overseas market. Um, and But I had this feeling that um, I did not um, understand the full significance of such a huge press. And it was uh, later on when I heard stories um, through my travelings as the comms manager, I, I get to... Um, spend time, interact with a lot of um, the local believers. So that was when I hear stories from them and one by one, they were telling me um, rather similar stories of how they did not um, have the Bible um, during the Cultural Revolution mm -hmm. and how the Bible was so precious to them and how they rejoice now at um, having the Bibles now. So uh, each time when I interacted with them, I was uh, really moved. To, to to see their their love for God's word. Right. And then I realized that I was entering into a middle of a grand story. And I was entering into this part where they're so happy having the Bibles now. And I realized that I did not really know what had happened um, before this at the beginning with the Bible, what happened along the way, and, and how Amity Press came to be. And as I continued serving, um, the story became more multifaceted and so compelling. And so I thought to myself, I, I really need to capture this. So there was this is one big uh, thing that happened. And the second thing that intrigued me a lot and, and led me to writing this book uh, was another book. Another book is called The Bible in China by Marshall Broomhall. Uh, he was a missionary to China uh, with the inland China Inland Missions. So this book was published in 1934. Uh, I remember feeling very inspired and moved by this book. Uh, I felt tremendous uh, gratitude that someone had uh, written and recorded uh, God's work uh, on Bible missions in China. It kind of like uh, put me in my place uh, historically and uh, deeply enriched my understanding and experience of Bible ministry. Um, so um, I begin to read about how the forerunners of Bible missions how they had already started to support and distribute scriptures across China, even despite huge challenges back then with the two world wars and Great Depression. So, in fact, by the 1930s, um, over 200 million Bibles, testament and portions had been distributed across China. So, subconsciously, when reading the book, I was um, so inspired to do likewise one day. Perhaps I could continue the story where Broom Hall had left off. Because I myself, I wanted to know how the story unfolded after that. Yeah. So, so that really, yeah, that really motivated me to 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 go into researching and and writing this book. Wow, it's such an exciting story, really. So, tell us a bit more about what's going on. We had the Cultural Revolution where Bibles yes. burned and and it was all it was all a mess. And then mm. oh, what's what's happened in the last few decades? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What has what has happened is really a Bible miracle that I was hoping to capture through the book. I would say it is a lot of a lot of uh, it's a giant step of faith, both on the part of the Chinese uh, church leaders, yeah, as well as the UBS leaders in trusting the Lord for a Bible printing press. Um, but in those days, that this was in nineteen eighty seven, where the circumstances were a little bit challenging. So China was just um, opening up and the church leaders were just beginning to get to know UBS. And the same thing for UBS leaders as well. They were getting to know the Chinese leaders. So there were this like back and forth um, relationship building. And in 1987, so this, this uh, so sorry, the relationship started in 1979. So okay. it took a few years. <laughs> it took a few years before it all culminated 
um, in, in the signing of MOU for the uh, the printing press to be established. So since then, um, the Bible mission has been uh, expanding to various different uh, areas. So besides um, supporting uh, printing of Chinese Bibles, um, UBS have been privileged to support as well in the Bible translation for ethnic minority churches, um, doing um, Bible tools, so adapting uh, study Bibles for seminary students, uh, pastors and preachers. So we are seeing um, a huge um, revival the past few decades. Uh, and we like to believe that uh, it is, has been fueled by the word of God. And at the same time, there has been a huge need as well that we hope to continue to support, especially in building and laying the biblical foundation uh, for the churches. Right. Mm. That's something, that's something in the book that people, well, I think the whole book will surprise people, but what's something particularly um, interesting or surprising or new for, for our yes. readers? Yeah, I think uh, simply the fact that the Bible uh, has gone from a banned book to a bestseller in the world's largest communist country. Yeah, mm -hmm. while serving with uh, UBS uh, China Partnership, I was sometimes we are so near to the work that we may not realize that a Bible miracle um, is happening every day before our eyes. And uh, not only that, uh, um, China has gone from a place where uh, the Bible was once confiscated um, and burned uh, to a place where it is now the world's largest Bible supplier, um, printing 70 Bibles per minute <laughs> and exporting the scriptures to more than 140 countries and region in over 190 different languages. <laughs> Wow. So all this is happening in a country ruled by a communist government, yeah, you know, where where the environment is not always favorable. So um, this I believe would be one huge um surprise to the readers, and I think the second surprise would be how actually um the believers in the registered churches um have grown, um the vitality of their faith, um how how they love um, God's word and how their lives has been transformed. So this is a group of people that I believe um, their stories have not really been captured and shared with the global church. And uh, this is what I really uh, hope to do. And I think uh, the last surprise, I think, yeah, might be the fact that um, overseas Chinese organizations like UBS yeah, um, have been welcomed and have been able to work for decades with the Chinese churches um, openly and legally uh, with the blessing of the government. I think that would be quite surprising as well to the readers. <laughs> now, some people will maybe think that all of those books get exported out of China um, or that the government, maybe it's a money-making business, obviously. So are these Bibles that people can afford and do some of the Bibles stay in China? Mm. So that is that is uh has been part of my work and my colleagues as well. Um, we will have our auditing trips. So we do go down to the ground. We witness uh, Bible distribution at, at the local churches. Uh, we get to talk to uh people who receive the Bibles, uh, the local Christians and um we get to see uh, and witness how uh, through photographs as well, uh, our church partners will send us uh, how these Bibles are, are not just um, stored at the warehouse, but are go really going out right. to different parts of China. Mm. A lot of them are, are exported, but you have seen, you're on the ground yourself, seen yes. distributed. Seen. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. And do you know how many get distributed within China each year? Right. Um, each year we have distributed um, usually about uh, three to four million. Average would be like maybe two, two to three. The highest was about four million a year. Yeah. That's really exciting. And you've seen the beautiful faces. So right. Yes. <laughs> so... 
why should someone buy this book if they're yeah why yeah I would think uh, this is a really rare chance, a rare chance for readers to to catch a glimpse of how uh, our sovereign Lord has uh, done the impossible for Chinese Christians uh, and to read many first-hand accounts um, from the archives of UBS. So as you have said, yeah, readers are uh, usually um, people who are concerned about China. Um, they would be familiar with news on religious restrictions in China, but uh, very rarely do they um, get to read about uh, what is possible in China and um, stories like how the Chinese have encountered um, the living God through his living word. And I hope they would be um, inspired to trust uh, in the Lord um, and live for him. And I find that this is uh, part of being a global Christian, that we um, learn about Christians um, all over the world, including those from the registered churches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, yeah, why I would encourage people to read my book. <laughs> now, your different chapters, the different chapters in the book go through various aspects. You look at mm -hmm. um, historical, you know, working up to modern day, but then there's things like, like you mentioned already, Bible study tools, mm -hmm. um, books there's braille there's mm. hundreds of languages so the chapters then the last half of the book maybe touch on all these scripture portions or sports or tell us a little bit more about some of those aspects okay yeah right um yeah this was what uh, fascinated me as well that um bible mission can be so uh, varied and um, what really touched me most um, was actually the opportunity to interact with the lay preachers during one of my visits. So uh, for them, we um, support them through um, giving them uh, Bible resources, so Bible tools. And one interesting uh, thing that we also support them, because we see that uh, China being big, and uh, a majority of the Christians were residing in the rural areas. So many of these lay preachers, they serve uh, believers up in the mountains. And um, there was uh, an observation that um, many of them uh, travel by walking. And so it takes a long time to reach these various um, houses when they do visitation. So... Uh, um, there's this interesting uh, and moving story that um, I got to know while researching for the book is that um, we also support them with uh, what we call Bible motorbikes. And it came from a beautiful story of a uh, Norwegian uh, missionary himself. So this missionary had a, a son uh, whose dream was to... Uh, um, go to China one day and take the gospel there. Yeah, but his young son actually uh, fell ill and he passed on. Um, so his dad, in memory of the son, wanted to do something for China. And uh, he got in touch with the Norwegian um, Bible Society um, staff and was finding out uh, what are the needs and what can he do. And so uh, at that time, it, uh, my director, Kobi Singh, he was uh, traveling and he visited and was able to meet up with them. And so uh, he shared this need about um, the lay preachers. And uh, it so happened that this, sorry, I made a mistake. It's not Norwegian, not a Norwegian uh, missionary, but a Finnish missionary. <laughs> sorry. So Finnish Bible Society um, connected, we sing, with uh, this Finnish uh, missionary. So uh, it so happened that this Finnish missionary uh, love to go on rides on motorbikes. And so he thought that it would be a good idea uh, in memory of his son that he would like to donate uh, motor Bible, uh, Bible motorbikes yeah, for the lay preachers. And then um, when we shared the news uh, with our church partners, yeah, they were really delighted and um, uh, immediately gave us uh, names of lay preachers who would uh, benefit from the Bible motorbikes. So uh, many of them, they shared with us how they were able to cut down on the number of um, hours spent on the road uh, with the with the motorbikes. Yeah, and uh, not just that, but also to transport Bibles to 
yeah, to the believers. That's fabulous. So do they put them on like bags on yeah. the on the motorbike? Motorbikes, yes, yes. Strap them in, yeah, boxes of Bible strapped to the bikes behind. Yeah. They can get up into the mountainous villages right, that right. All right. Yeah. yeah. And the, the book is full of stories like this. It's just oh, sorry. Yes. So it, you did a lot of historical research and you've gone into the the archives, UBS, and you've done a lot of, it's a very much a research, but you're a good storyteller as well. And it's just full of these amazing stories. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been really an honor. Uh, I find that the Lord has been also encouraging me and inspiring me in, in the process of writing. Although there were days where, like, like many other writers, I struggled with writing. Uh, but there was one day where I had like epiphany like moments with the Lord when I was writing the chapter on the growth um, of Chinese churches. I was myself very moved uh, by how it has grown. And then the Lord was telling me, um, do you believe that I'm able to do the same today in places which are also very hard? So I was really, yeah, really moved by how the Lord was um, using um, the time when I was writing to speak to me as well. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I guess one last thing would be that I really, I really hope that uh, readers would be inspired to pick up the Bibles themselves to read. Mm -hmm. um, after reading how the Chinese Christians love the word of God and how their lives have been transformed. Yeah, I hope that um, many people out there yeah, would uh, look forward yeah, to turning the pages of the Bibles for themselves and discover the rich, the riches yeah, in, in God's Word. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, thank you. Um, the, the book will be published. Yeah, it's for sale on our website or through Amazon or major uh, distributors around the world or you can write to us if anybody wants a number of copies we do everything we can to get books to people around the world so um, that's missionbooks.org is our website and uh, thank you so much for coming Cynthia thank you, thank you Vivian thank you